Imagine if our modern world crumbled to dust, leaving behind only the skeletal remains of skyscrapers. 10,000 years from now, what tools would archaeologists find at these sites? A fascinating question indeed, and one that leads us to the principle of parsimony, a tenet archaeologists often apply to their work. This principle suggests that the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. Think of it as the Occam's razor of archaeology. When applied to megalithic sites, this principle leads us to believe that ancient structures were built with the most basic tools found nearby. But let's take a moment to ponder. Our most advanced construction tools today are made from materials that wouldn't withstand the test of time. Metals rust, plastics degrade, and all that's durable fades away. The tools that we use to erect skyscrapers, bridges, and monumental structures would be virtually untraceable after several millennia. Now imagine the materials used in ancient tools. Stone, metal, wood. Each of these materials has a vastly different lifespan. Stone may endure, but metal corrodes and wood decays. This discrepancy can lead to a significant bias in archaeological findings, potentially overlooking the possibility of advanced ancient technologies. Consider the precise cuts and astronomical alignments of megalithic structures. They are marvels of engineering that continue to baffle us today. Yet the absence of advanced tools at these sites under the principle of parsimony simplifies their construction to a level that defies logical engineering analysis. Fast forward to a future where archaeologists unearth a skyscraper's ruins, finding only maintenance tools like mops and brooms. Applying the principle of parsimony, they might conclude these skyscrapers were built with such rudimentary implements, ignoring the likelihood of lost advanced machinery. This brings us to a thought-provoking conclusion. If skyscrapers' tools vanish with time, why do we expect to find ancient civilizations' advanced tools? It's time we peel back the layers of history and question the assumptions we've held for so long. Let's journey deeper into the past and challenge everything we think we know about ancient construction. The materials used in ancient tools, stone, metal, wood, have vastly different lifespans. Now, let's delve into this fascinating topic. Stone, a stalwart material, has an enduring quality that has allowed it to stand the test of time. From the chiselled flint of prehistoric hand axes to the colossal blocks of the pyramids, stone tools and structures continue to provide us with a tangible link to our ancestors. Their durability is a testament to their longevity, with many artefacts surviving virtually intact for thousands of years. On the other hand, metal, despite its strength and versatility, is a victim of its own chemical composition. Iron rusts, Copper corrodes, and even the mighty bronze is not impervious to the ravages of time. These reactions with the environment gradually degrade metal tools, causing them to lose their original form and function. The result? A distorted glimpse into the past that can often be misleading. Wood, a once living material, has a lifespan dictated by environmental conditions. In arid climates, wooden artifacts can survive for centuries, even millennia. However, in damp environments, wood succumbs to decay, often disappearing entirely from the archaeological record within a few hundred years. Now imagine the tools used in constructing the monumental buildings of our time. The cranes, the bulldozers, the high-tech laser levels, all are made from materials such as plastics and metals that are unlikely to endure through the ages. These tools, so essential to our modern construction methods, would likely leave no trace for future archaeologists to discover. So, we have an interesting conundrum. We have stone tools that survive, metal tools that corrode, and wooden tools that decay. This differential preservation of materials presents a skewed perspective of our past. The stone tools endure, while the more advanced tools of wood and metal are lost to time. This discrepancy can lead to an archaeological bias, where we assume that the tools we find were the only ones used. It's a bias that might cause us to overlook the possibility of advanced ancient technologies. After all, just because we don't find something doesn't mean it didn't exist. This is a lesson that challenges us to reconsider our understanding of the past and invites us to explore the potential sophistication of ancient civilizations. Consider the precise cuts and astronomical alignments of megalithic structures. These timeless marvels of engineering have stood the test of time, 
but the tools that built them, it seems, have not. This is where we encounter a curious case of archaeological bias. Let's take a step back to understand this bias. Archaeologists often apply the principle of parsimony, also known as Occam's razor. This principle suggests that the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. In the context of ancient structures, this principle has guided us to believe that these structures were built with the most basic tools found nearby. But is this belief limiting our understanding of ancient civilizations? Are we, in our quest for simplicity, overlooking the possibility of advanced ancient technologies? Think about it. Our most advanced construction tools today are made from materials that wouldn't withstand the test of time. Metals rust, plastics degrade, and all that is durable fades away. If the tools we use to build skyscrapers vanish with time, why do we expect to find the advanced tools of ancient civilizations? The materials used in ancient tools, stone, metal, wood, have vastly different lifespans. Stone may endure, but metal corrodes and wood decays. This discrepancy can lead us to ignore the possibility that ancient builders may have used advanced tools that have since disintegrated. Now consider the archaeological bias this creates. At ancient sites, the absence of advanced tools could lead us to oversimplify the construction process. We might assume that these grand structures, with their intricate detailing and precise alignments, were constructed using only the most rudimentary tools. This assumption, however, defies logical engineering analysis today. Could it be that advanced tools did exist, but have since been lost to time? Could it be that our ancestors were more technologically advanced than we give them credit for? Or could it be that a more advanced civilization once existed long before what we're told? The absence of advanced tools at these sites under the principle of parsimony simplifies their construction to a level that defies logical engineering analysis today. The challenge lies in looking beyond what is immediately evident in questioning our assumptions and in exploring the boundless possibilities of human ingenuity. Fast forward to a future where archaeologists unearth the skyscraper's ruins, finding only maintenance tools like brushes and scrapers. Picture this, it's 10,000 years from now and our modern civilization is but a distant memory. Our towering skyscrapers, once symbols of human progress, have crumbled, leaving only skeletal remains. Future archaeologists comb through these ruins, eager to uncover the secrets of a long-forgotten civilization. They stumble upon a curious array of tools, not the sophisticated machinery we might expect, but simple rudimentary items. Mops, brooms, and perhaps a few rusted hammers. These tools, durable and resistant to the passage of time, are the only physical evidence of the construction methods used to erect these once majestic buildings. But here's where the plot thickens. These archaeologists, applying the principle of parsimony, might conclude that these skyscrapers were built with such simple tools. After all, the simplest explanation is often the correct one, right? Not so fast. This assumption overlooks the likelihood of lost advanced machinery, the tools of our time that simply didn't stand the test of time. Our most advanced construction tools today are made from materials that wouldn't withstand a millennium, let alone 10. Metals rust, plastics degrade, and all that's durable fades away. So, if the tools of modern skyscrapers vanish with time, why do we expect to find those of ancient civilizations? Now think about a typical neighborhood from our era. Without finding power tools, construction vehicles, or even simple machines like cranes, these future archaeologists might conclude that the homes were built using nothing more than hammers and rakes found in the ruins. A ludicrous assumption, right? But isn't this exactly what we do when we explore ancient sites today? This scenario illustrates the flaw in assuming the tools found at a site were the only ones used in its construction. It challenges our understanding of ancient civilizations and their technological capabilities. It's a humbling reminder that the past may hold more complexities than we ever imagined, and our interpretation of it is always evolving. We must continue digging, questioning and exploring, for the future of archaeology is as much about understanding the past as it is about shaping our own future. Today's builders rely on a suite of sophisticated tools for precision and alignment. As we delve into the world of modern construction, we encounter a realm of technological marvels that have revolutionised the way we build. 
From the laser levels that project perfectly straight lines over vast distances to the GPS survey equipment that ensures accurate positioning, the tools of today are a testament to our ingenuity. Telescopes allow us to make precise astronomical alignments while powerful construction vehicles and machinery such as cranes, hydraulic presses and welding equipment help us erect structures that reach for the skies. Yet despite their crucial role in shaping our infrastructure, these advanced tools are made from materials that are prone to decay. Metals rust, plastics degrade, and even the most durable substances will eventually fade away. The construction sites of today, bustling with activity and brimming with machinery, will one day be quiet, their tools long gone. Consider the construction of a modern bridge, a marvel of engineering that requires a vast array of tools for its assembly. Yet once the bridge is complete, these tools are not typically left behind. Over millennia, they would rust, decompose or be repurposed, leaving no trace in the archaeological record. Future archaeologists excavating the remnants of a bridge or skyscraper might only find manual tools. Applying the principle of parsimony, they might conclude these structures were built with nothing more than the rudimentary implements found at the site. This scenario points to a potential flaw in our understanding of ancient construction sites. If the advanced tools of today would leave no trace over thousands of years, how can we expect the tools of ancient builders to have survived? The answer to this question might challenge everything we think we know about ancient construction. It challenges us to consider the possibility that the monumental achievements of the past may well be the work of sophisticated technologies and methods that have simply not withstood the ravages of time. Deem, this reflection on modern construction challenges us to revisit ancient megalithic sites with a new perspective. As we delve into the depths of our history, we confront the colossal structures of the past. These megalithic sites with their intricate designs and astronomical alignments seemingly defy the capabilities of the tools we believe were available to ancient civilizations. Yet our understanding of the past is largely dictated by the material remnants that have stood the test of time. Stone endures, but what about the other, more perishable materials? Could the absence of advanced tools at these sites be a result of their inevitable decay over millennia, rather than an indication of their non-existence? The principle of parsimony has often led us to the simplest explanation. That these structures were built with rudimentary tools, However, this principle fails to account for the complexity and precision evident in these ancient megalithic sites. Could it be that our ancestors possessed advanced technologies now lost to time that enabled them to construct these architectural wonders? When we consider the construction process of a modern bridge or skyscraper, it becomes apparent that without sophisticated machinery, such precision and scale would be unattainable. Yet these tools, made from materials susceptible to decay, are unlikely to be found by future archaeologists. This begs the question, if the advanced tools of today would leave no trace over thousands of years, how can we expect the tools of ancient builders to have survived? This reflection urges us to reconsider our approach to understanding the past. We must entertain the possibility of advanced ancient technologies, even if physical evidence of such tools has not withstood the ravages of time. The monumental achievements of the past may well be the work of sophisticated technologies and methods that have simply not withstood the ravages of time. So let's broaden our perspective. Let's challenge the notion that the tools found at a site were the only ones used in its construction. Let's re-examine these ancient megalithic sites, not as relics of a primitive past, but as testaments to the boundless ingenuity of our ancestors. The mysteries embedded in megalithic stones across the globe beckon us to question, to seek and to imagine the boundless ingenuity of ancient civilizations. As we delve into the narratives of the past, we are often left in awe of the staggering achievements of our ancestors. The intricate carvings, the precise alignments, the sheer scale of the structures they built, these are all testaments to their mastery over their environment and their deep understanding of the cosmos. Yet much of this history remains shrouded in mystery. 
The tools and techniques used by ancient builders have largely vanished, leaving us to piece together the puzzle with only fragments of evidence. And while we can marvel at the end result, the process by which these structures were created is often lost in the sands of time. This is where the role of archaeologists and historians becomes crucial. They are the detectives of history, using every scrap of evidence to decipher the past. But in their quest for answers, they must also grapple with the constraints of their own time and perspective. They must challenge their assumptions, question their interpretations, and remain open to the possibility that there is much they do not know. But there's an inherent beauty in these mysteries, a call to curiosity that stokes our desire to learn and explore. Each unanswered question, each unsolved puzzle, invites us to delve deeper, to broaden our understanding and expand our horizons. It's a call to look beyond the obvious, to question the known, and to seek out the hidden truths that lie beneath the surface. Our journey into the past is not just about uncovering the secrets of ancient civilizations, it's also about understanding our own place in the grand tapestry of history and appreciating the ingenuity and resilience of the human spirit. It's about recognizing that our ancestors were not just primitive builders, but skilled engineers, capable of feats that still astound us today. As custodians of history, it's our duty to explore beyond the obvious and question the known. The mysteries of history are ours to unravel, and in doing so, we honor the legacy of those who came before us and paved the way for those who will come after.